Okay, this is the bottom shelf. Uh, so hopefully the video comes out okay. Um, this is my, this is history. This is some of my history. This is more uh, um, overviews of history. But what you're seeing right now is history of, uh, well, history of not so nice places. How about that? I've got Russian history here and German history and things like that. So I'll go through them. So on the far right is the, the Mitrokin archive. I guess it's supposed to be about KGB stuff, um, but I've ha haven't uh, touched through that. Haven't I've had it for a while though, but I haven't looked at it. Um, here's one day in the life of Ivan Denisovich by, of course, Solzhenitsyn. That's supposed to be. Um, it's supposed to be about Russia. Someone. I think it's supposed to be about someone's life. Um, in uh, Russian gulag or something, yeah, Siberia. So I think that's a, I think that's history. I don't think it's fiction. Pretty sure it's history. So it's about the gulag. So of course, beside it, I've got uh, the gulag archi archipelago. Uh, that's volume three. I've only found in a used bookstore. But if I find the other ones, I'll, I will get them. Um, that's supposed to be some not so nice reading about the gulag, so that's like slave labor camps and things like that, that that occurred in under Soviet, uh, when or under the USSR, in uh, formerly uh, or Russia, formerly the Soviet Union, I mean, which was the USSR. Uh, the decline of Imperial Russia. There's that. Um, Kurt Gerstein, um, Saul Friedlander. So Kurt Gerstein was a French, no, he was a German, I don't know if he was in the uh, German police, secret police, and he was captured by France, and he, um, it, there was, there's controversy over it, that's why someone wrote a book about him, there's contra controversy over it because I think he was innocent of his charges, but they, they, I think they executed him or something anyways. So there's a bit of controversy about that. So it's an old cloth binding too. I found it at a church, a church book sale. So I grabbed that. Here's the Omnis Parallels by Peacock. This, I've been about halfway through it. This is actually pretty good. Um, talks about, one thing, I, the reason why I picked this up was because it talks about the philosophy behind a lot of German um, view or German philosophy, like Kant, of course, and Kant, of course, is railed, um, railed against by the objectivists. Uh, but um, I thought this was very good. Talked about what leads, what he believes leads to Nazism and leads to that kind of view of life, view of human life, especially. Um, and then he tries to say that. Uh, the United States is moving in that direction with its philosophy and the kinds of intellectuals that it holds and and that kind of stuff. So um, it's very good, actually. It was Peikoff's first book. And so, yeah, it's a good one. Uh, here is the Diary of Joseph Goebbels, Final Entries. So there is some, there is some talk about whether Goebbels had more of an influence on the Germans' um, gas chambers and all that operation than Hitler. So, um, anyways, that's something that would uh, be interesting to look through someday. Here's Waterloo uh, by Andrew Roberts. So this is about, uh, I think it's about Napoleon, yeah. Napoleon lost that battle. Um, oh, here's something interesting. I found, I saw this, um, it's, it's the pictorial history of the Third Reich, and I thought, okay, maybe that'll be neat. So it's got all kinds of pictures of, of German's Third Reich. So, it has a little bit of text, but I don't know if you can even see that. The camera's not working very well right now. Hopefully the audio is okay, though. So it's just got pictures of, of that stuff, so... Those are always nice to have um, than just text. You can have some pictures to look at of what that kind of society was like. Um, strange that a lot of social provisions were first made in 
Hitler's Germany, like for example, environmental environmentalist um, programs were first found in Nazi Germany, were first uh, done there. Um, here's Anne Frank, Diary of a Young Girl, so that should be fairly, um, people should know what that is. The Wall by John Hersey, so this is also about Nazi concentration camps. Um, Berlin Diary by William L. Shire, so should know who that is, and his, his book is coming up here. The Birth of the Nazis is a brief history of, there's all kinds of these brief history of. Um, so here's the big one. Here's the big Shire book, Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Because I need to move the camera a little bit. Okay. Um, the Merchant of Prato, right here. I think this is about Italy. Let me just get this one out. Daily life in a medieval Italian city. You know, you always hear about the major events in history. But you don't often hear about what it's like to live as an ordinary person in a certain time. So that's what that one's about. And I think I skipped a book here, so let me get to that one. Here is uh, The Habsburg Monarchy by Taylor. Habsburgs are Austrian. Um, here's The Russians by Henrik Smith. Here is the uh, the raw expeditions right here. Let me pull this one out so you can see the cover. So this is about people who have this hypothesis that thought that Egyptians may have been able to cross the Atlantic into South America. And I guess they have a little bit of evidence that that might be the case. I think it might have to do with the Incas, but I'm not sure about that. That might be wrong. So um, they tried it. They built a boat out of bamboo, I think, and they tried to sail the Atlantic. That's what that one's about. To test the hypothesis. Okay. Um, now we've got more general history books. Let's move it over. Okay. North American Exploration. A giant book on that. Giant hardcover book. So that'll be all about the New World and things like that, which, of course, I'm interested in. Uh, this one's called The Age of Reconnaissance, big hardcover, by J.H. Perry. Same thing, that's on the uh, the New World Explorations. So that is that is uh, 16th century, uh, Spain and... Uh, what the heck's his name? Spain and England and France, and then the Dutch came over later. That's all that stuff, which I'm interested in. I'm interested in trade and things like that. It's interesting. Here's a hardcover, The Conquest of Mexico and The Conquest of Peru. So that's the same kind of histor uh, historical era. The agrarian problem in the 16th century. Agrarian, of course, is farming. That's by R.H. Tawney. Here is the New new Worlds, Lost Worlds, The Rule of the Tudors, um, 1485 to 1603. So the Tudors were, I believe, a British royal family. Here is The Great Adventures. Whoops, The Great Adventure, How the Mounties Conquered the West. So the Mounties are, are the um, Canadian um, police... Canadian, what would you call it? Canadian FBI, I guess. Canadian FBI. And yes, they wear red coats. And no, they're not always on horseback. Okay. Um, here is the Reformation in England. So, of course, that's about religion. Reformation. All that stuff. Um, and uh, the English Reformation to 1558. I think this one, I thought maybe they were at different years, so I thought they, they actually were complementary, but I'm not sure. There's a big book on medieval England. Um, here is, let's move this down a bit. Here is Paul Johnson's History of the English People. Paul Johnson's got quite a few of these out. He's got also a History of the American People, but I don't have that. 
And I've got, at the very bottom here, H.G. Wells' Outline of History. So that those are reference books. You don't sit there and read one cover to cover. You just, if you need something, then you, then you go to it. And here is the four volumes of Churchill. Churchill wrote these, Winston, um, The Birth of the, uh, Britain, The New World, The Age of Revolution, and The Great uh, Democracies. And then at the very top here, I have The Isle. The Isle by Davies. It's just a blue hardcover. And of course, what isle? What isles are, are is it talking about? The British Isles. So those are, that's my, uh, that's not all the history. I have some more, but that is the um, not-so-nice places history and the New World history. Although I have some more on that at another place. I'll probably just stick it on the end of this video, so. Okay, this is my uh, more modern history, so maybe the earliest is um, 18th century or something like that. So on the far left is history of, of the East. So I've got here the Great Wall, China against the world, 1000 BC to 2000 AD. Is that one? Um, the Chan's Great Continent, China in Western Mines, by Spence. Daily Life in Ancient India. So I got that because of the Daily Life. So that's similar to that other book that I have on Daily Life in in Italy. Uh, the 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 one about Prato, the merchant. Here's the idea of India. Um, what is that one about? I guess, uh, the nation? The nation of Idi India. I guess it's just about India. Journey to the Far Pacific. So this is supposed to be about, um, the New World Era, but, but it's about, uh, Western nations going to um, the east, going to India and stuff like that. So I just want to show you this because it's interesting. Um, the old countries. What's going on? Oh, there we go. Jeez, <laughs> um, I don't know how well you can see this. It just shows um, Chinese Republic and Manchuria used to be a part of China. You better see it now. There's India and uh, Korea and uh, USSR, of course. Um, where's Vietnam? They probably don't, they don't think they even exist. And there's uh, Japan and the Philippines, etc. So I just thought that was interesting that Manchuria was an independent nation. And there's the Chinese Republic. There's Burma and Thailand, and Indochina, their own country. So, it's interesting. There's Hong Kong. They were not uh, independent, because the Britain, the British hadn't been there yet. So, interesting. Old, old territory boundaries. Here's some, these are a few books on ships. So, there's the fighting ships, brief history of. Here is uh, 25 Years of Sea Warfare. Pirates of Barbary. So people think that uh, slavery was only white people enslaving black people. Well, no. I'm afraid that slavery is as a human condition. All nations enslaved other nations. Africa sell, sold their own children to other people. and um, Barbary pirates were off North Africa would capture European vessels and sell them into slavery, and so it's it's everywhere. It's not a white thing. That's just smear. That's just ridiculous. That's ideology, perhaps. Um, here is uh, misogyny. Brief history of misogyny. Well, we got into that one. Uh, Fifty percent of the population being um, stumped 
I'm glad we got out of that one. That was a waste. Um, here's uh, before the Industrial Revolution. European society and economy, 1000 to 1700 AD. There's 18th century Europe, tradition and progress. So these are just more reference books. Here's a, a series by Hobsbawm, The Age of Revolution. Jeez, I, there we go. And The Age of Capital. They're both back-to-back -back time periods. There's the Age of Capital. Okay. The Response to Industrialism, 85 to 1914. Been, that would have been World War I. Uh, here is Democracy in America by Tocqueville. That should be fairly... You should know what that one is. Constitution of the United States. How about that? And how about you Americans find this again? Um, rediscover it. Find If you don't own one and you're American, I don't know what, what's going on with that. This is supposed to be your... This is supposed to be your, uh, your treasured document. This is supposed to be the the the, uh, the 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 shackles on government. What happened? What happened, Americans? What happened? A new republic, a history of the United States in the twentieth century, by Luke Lukacs, L U K A C S. Here is um, David McCullens. 1776. What is that? If you're an American and don't know what that is, I don't know what to say to you. Here's Canada. This is a really old book. It's in a cardboard case, and then it's uh, hardcover. Here, let me, I'm going to show you this because it has a little bit of a story behind it. Canada, the foundation of its future. And it's got like a little emblem there. By Stephen Leacock. And I was looking at it, because I found this in, in the basement. Um, printed privately in Montreal, Canada. And it's got Roman numerals. MCM, XLI. MCM is 1900. XLI is XL. L is 50, so XL is 60, 1, so 1961, oh no, 51, 41, uh, 41, should be, should be 41, I think that's it, uh, 1941, so uh, the reason I wanted to pull this out was because, oh here, um, house is printed by the House of Seagram, and it was signed by some Samuel something. But uh, I looked it up on eBay. I wonder if it was worth any money. And I guess they're all signed, so <laughs> it's not worth any money. Oh well. Here's Richard Evans, just a couple left here. Richard Evans, in defense of history. This is supposed to be about history, I guess, as attacked by postmodernism. Um, as history is, you know, the white man's history or the victor's history, the, the one who wins the battle makes the history. and um, It's all uh, what is the reality and, and uh, who makes up these histories and history of Native Americans and as being savages is just like the white European view and we want to take the, the non-European view or the, the we don't want to take the Eurocentric view we want to take the, the, the North American view or the in, uh, Aboriginal view although why is it any better it's still ideology how about the truth let's take the truth but oh no what is the truth and they don't there's no truth I guess to them but um, this is supposed to be a defense of the method of history and how do we discover reality with history and how do we know that this happened in the past? How do we know that Napoleon really existed? Or even how do we know that Jesus existed? How do we know that Muhammad existed? 
But Moses, uh, did, did Socrates exist? All we know about Socrates is through Plato. Do we know that he existed? Um, it's, def it's a defense of the method of history, how we discover what happened in history, how can we be sure it happened, and what kinds of evidence we use to, to, um, to make claims about what happened in history, things like that. Here's a little oddity. Um, I had contacted, I think I contacted them. I'm trying to think how this ever occurred. Well, I told you about Lloyd DeMoss. Um, he runs the Journal of Psychohistory. It's called it's an academic journal. And for some reason, I got a free uh, edition. And of course, they wanted me to sign up, but of course I didn't because through the university, you can get it all for free because the university pays for the subscriptions. So anyways, I got one. Uh, it's got the prehistory of parenting, the family, culture, and psychohistory, rewriting the criminal narrative. It's got some weird stuff in it. And one more thing on history, although I have more history of it. I have some antiquity history down here, which I'll do another video for. Here is a study of history by Toynbee, Arnold Toynbee. That should be a name you should know for history, famous historian. Now, you probably barely can read that, but it's just a brown hardcover. A study of history by Arnold Toynbee. All right, that's it for modern history and random stuff.